Hi, my name's AJ Goldsby. I'm a life master from Pensacola, Florida, and I'm coming today to bring you part six in my video series on the game between Grandmaster Wesley So and Grandmaster Alexei Shirov. We're just going to quickly run through those moves because we've already covered these moves in the first five parts, and I want to get to where I left off in the last time. This is part six again of my video series. Just going to quickly run through the moves to get to where we were the last time. Again, White has got a second knight in on e5, and now he plays the move f4, which is a very good move because it strengthens White's grip on the center. And again, we covered all of these moves in the first five parts of this video. Here, Black offered a pawn gambit, and White declined it. He basically decided not to take the pawn simply because that would open up the light squares for Black's bishop, and that's something that White's been trying to prevent the entire game. And I wanted to get back to this point here. And here, this we covered this in the last part. White played bishop b5. And I showed you the variation last time where white wins by force. And again, if you wanted to verify that, you could take any chess engine and verify that if black exchanges rooks here, he's completely lost here. So rook f7 is completely forced. You know, Shirov didn't want to do that, but he had to give up the file. White plays rook d7, raf8, rook at 2 to d6. Now, this was a very nice move here. Uh, rook d6 is a very nice move, but white, he actually, uh, so actually missed, I believe, a, a winning line here for white. And the better move was rook takes f7, rook takes, rook d8. Black really can't do anything. He basically, all he can do is temporize. Rook a8, a6, rook d8. The idea was just to force a weakness over there on the dark squares. And also fix the uh, the b7 pawn on the uh the, the B pawn on the B7 square. In other words, since this pawn isn't here, this pawn can never push up. Rook F7, King G1. And just very quickly go through these moves here. And now Queen D8. And Black's completely lost here. I'm just going to quickly fire up a chess engine. Let's just go ahead and quickly fire up Fritz. And I just want to show that Black... Uh, White's winning here by the, th you know, the threats are just overwhelming. According to Fritz, White's winning by, well, now it's showing mate in 13. It, f first, it was showing an advantage of 15 points. Now it's going to mate finder mode. So apparently, Black can no longer, you know, stop mate. I don't want to uh, analyze that all the way out. I mean, you can you can fire up your own chess engine if you're really interested in doing that and, and explore that position more deeply. But here, you know, White's last move was rook at 2 to d6. And he missed a forced win at this point. King g8. Rook takes f7. Now he gets back on the right track. Rook takes f7. Rook d8 check. King h7. a4. a6. Queen e1. Bishop g6. And, um, you know, as soon as the white queen comes to the d file and, and black, white penetrates up the d file, black's going to be lost. That's pretty much another theme of this position. Basically, black's playing this position a piece down. That's the other thing you have to understand about opposite colored bishop in games. Pawn up, pawn down doesn't matter that much. What does matter here is that black's bishop on these light squares trapped between this rook and this queen, the king here and the pawn here, you can pretty much see this this bishop's a prisoner. It might as well almost not be on the border, be a tall pawn. And basically, therefore, white's effectively playing the game a piece up in this position. King g1, bishop f5, queen f2, bishop g6, king f1, rook f5, king e1. This is the idea about this move is getting the king over here. And in some lines, he can even march all over the queen side. But the other line is now that the white queen will be free to penetrate down into black's position without having to worry about this queen coming in and getting a perpetual check here. Bishop e8, queen d2, queen g6, rook b8. And now black is in complete zigzagging. I mean, this is just an amazing position. For instance, if the queen moves, tries to go to g3 check, you know, then, then you know, white can just simply move away. I mean, you know, you can try almost any number of things here, but black is in zigzagging. His king can't move. He doesn't want to move back in the pin. You know, if he moves his rook away, then then... White penetrates in on the seventh rank. Another thing, another idea for White is simply play Queen D8 and Rook A7 and Queen B8, Rook A B7, and pile up on this B pawn and win it. And because of Black's position, he's totally helpless to prevent all that. He plays Queen G3 check, Queen F2, Bishop H5, 
and now white just wins a pawn, you know, and now the pawns begin to fall. And basically now we're entering the final stages of the game. You know, black's done the best he can, but, you know, there really wasn't much he could do. But white has just simply played, you know, perfect chess, and black hasn't been unable to, st to stop him, for, you know, to prevent a loss of material. Rook f7, queen takes g3, h takes g3. Now here, if white exchanges the rooks, it becomes very hard to win because opposite color bishops are not notorious for their drawing possibilities. And so blithely, just he just very neatly sidesteps that little trap. Rook b6, rook d7. And again, we now we, w there is a threat here. The threat now is just simply rook d1 checkmate, which shows you always have to pay attention to your opponent's threats, even in a so-called one position. I mean, there's always the possibility of going wrong. So white just blocks off the d-file. That thread is very easily taken care of. e5, d takes e5. Black's just, he's basically just thrashing around about trying to get, you know, some freedom for his pieces. Rook f7, e6, rook f2, bishop takes g3, rook takes g2, bishop f4, g5, white plays king f1, attacking the rook, rook to c2. Bishop takes g5, rook takes c5, now white just plays h4, king g6. And now there's just a very real threat that white will just jam in this e-pawn, totally tie black's pieces up. The pawn won't be able to queen because the king and the rook can come back and stop it. But it will so tie black's pieces up, then white will do something like take this a-pawn and run his a-pawn in. White plays e7, king f5. Now white plays rook b8, and, and now black's forced to, to uh, you know, the, the machine prefers the pawn grab on a6 here, but I'm quite sure that So's move is much more artistic and also, in a way, more forceful. The idea is, you know, if white can win a piece here, he's just winning the game. Rook b8, rook e5, that was forced. You know, now the rook and the bishop on h5, excuse me, control the, uh, the queening square, the promotion square, the e8 square. Rook f8 check. King g4, and here you might think that, you know, white might try to do a number of things, but all of a sudden he plays a, a nice quiet little move, king g2, and all of a sudden here, black is suddenly realizes not only does he have to deal with white's many threats of winning material on the queen side, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but also his king is, the black king is now in a mating web, white's threat is simply play rook f4 mate, and in order to prevent that, you know, you know, Shirov would have to do something like rook f5, when white can now just win with the following variation, bishop f4. All these moves are forced. You can verify this in chess engine, rook c5, bishop g3, check, rook to f2. And now white's threatening to promote his pawn. So basically black's got to, you know, this sack is more or less forced. Other white, white's just going to promote his pawn. Rook takes, check, takes, c5, king g2, king takes. Rook pins here, king g5, rook takes h5, check. King h5, e8, queen. And of course, this is an extremely simple win now for white. White, you know, would not have to work anymore. But just going back here to the final position in the actual game, in the actual game, white simply played his move 59, king g2, which basically was the icing on the cake. It was the, the uh, his Mount Everest. It was the top of his strategy. In other words, he he played side to slot, side, uh, white played different threats. He threat tied black up with an e pawn, but the final move was the idea of a, a mating web on the black king. And apparently, Shirov was, you know, he, he realized he was completely lost here, and he he didn't even choose to continue on. He just simply threw in the towel. And this was to date, I believe, one of Wesley So's very best games. And that completes my coverage of this game. I'll post links for my. Uh, I have a web page on this game. It's already posted on the internet on my website. And I will post the links for that web page. There's a little box on the YouTube video just below the box which holds the video itself. If you click on it, there's a little thing that says show more. If you'll click on that area, show more under all the videos. Once I get all the videos uploaded to the YouTube channel, I will place the links for my web page. And also the chess games web page for this game so you can see some of the analysis, the comments there. And also uh, replay some of the excellent analysis, especially that piece of analysis by Random Visitor. There's also a nice little variation. I call it Fire on Board by iKing. Again, it shows basically some of the same ideas I showed in one of the parts of the video. But anyway, you can replay that. You can see all those moves and check out that analysis and the comments on this game. 
And if you've enjoyed my video, you know, just tell a friend about it. If you really like the video and you'd like to contribute to my efforts of making videos and making chess web pages, then all you have to do is go to my website. You know, again, the link will be on the show more part just below the video itself. And if you go to my website, there's a link there for the PayPal and you can contribute to my websites on the PayPal link on my website. And um, I just like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my video series on this game and I hope you enjoy my webpage on this game and feel free to, to write me. My uh, email address is lifemasteraj, all one word, no spaces, no hyphens, lifemasteraj at yahoo.com. Thank you for watching my video and have a great day.